Dr. David Omi here. I'm a neurosurgeon and spine surgeon based in Melbourne, Australia, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about spinal fusion. Now, spinal fusion is basically where a surgeon joins one or more segments of the spine together to eliminate movement at that level. Now, there are different reasons as to why we might advise spinal fusion is appropriate to manage your condition. Now, to understand what spinal fusion is, I'm just going to show you on this model. Here we can see the spine. Here are the vertebral bodies stacked up on top of each other, and in between we have the intervertebral discs. Now, in the normal spine, each of these levels will move around the disc. Now, when we perform a spinal fusion, we basically remove the disc at the level that we're going to fuse, and then we put in place of the disc a spacer filled with bone graft, and then we immobilize that segment of the spine, typically with screws and rods. Once that segment is immobilized and we have the spacer and the bone graft between the two vertebral bodies, over time, bone will form and those two vertebral bodies will become one. And that is what is known as the spinal fusion. Now there are different ways that we can perform a spinal fusion. And the simplest way to think about it is the approach that the spinal surgeon uses. We can approach the spine from the front and that's called an anterior fusion. We can approach the sp spine from the side and that's called a lateral fusion. Or most commonly we can approach the spine from the back and that's called a posterior fusion. Now there are different reasons as to why your spine surgeon might recommend spinal fusion and it's not appropriate for most spinal conditions. We don't make the decision to fuse someone lightly, however in some patients it's the best treatment option for them. Reasons why we might fuse a patient might be in the setting of trauma, if they have a fracture and the spine needs to be immobilised. Or in the setting of a tumour, perhaps the tumour has eroded so much of the bone or destabilised the spine that when we're removing it we need to stabilise that spine by inserting screws and rods and performing a fusion. In the setting of degenerative spinal problems, it may be appropriate to perform a spinal fusion as well. If a patient has had multiple disc prolapses and perhaps they're onto their third disc prolapse at one level, it may be appropriate to fuse that level of the spine to rule out any further disc prolapses. In some patients where there's very extensive compression of the nerves and we need to remove a a lot of bone, we need to remove all of the facet joints, the lamina to adequately decompress the nerves. This can be quite destabilizing, in which case it's better to stabilize the spine so that we don't create problems of back pain down the track. In spondylolisthesis, which is the slipping of one vertebral body on top of another, the treatment of that involves spinal fusion. There's also other conditions such as scoliosis where spinal fusion is the best treatment. There is some controversy around spinal fusion to treat back pain and we don't offer this surgery very routinely. There are only some very specific indications where spinal fusion for back pain may be necessary. In the most part, patients with back pain do not need spinal fusion surgery. For more information about treatment for back pain or some of the other conditions that I've discussed today, check out the other videos on my channel.